Um, welcome to the Select Board Board of Health Sewer Commissioners meeting of February 28, 2024 at 5 p.m., 5.03 p.m. here in the Deerfield uh, main meeting room in South Deerfield, Mass. This meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on the agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. The meeting will be held in-person in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices. In accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, anyone intending to record the meeting must identify themselves to our clerk, Trevor McDaniel, and provide their name and address for the record. Thank you. Okay, so we called the order. Um, we're suspending public comment. I don't see any public comment anyway. Um, so uh, select board um, announcements. I just wanted to say that um, Hawks Road did get started. It's under emergency order and um, it will proceed once we get past this um, weather. Um, I just wanted people to know that we are working on it. Um, Jim, did you have anything on the 1828 building or the 1888 building? Um, not really. Okay. Um, Trevor, did you have any sewer updates? Uh, no, I just noticed they, um, I uh, posted an update to, um, one of the social media pages tonight that, um, we had an update. They were working on the drainage. So it looked, you know, saw the manhole in and pipes in. So they've been working on that. Um, I know Chris from the recorder reached out about kind of when the completion date is, and I've got to get back to him. I, I believe it's the end of April. I don't think it's May. It could be May, but I'm almost positive it's the end of April. Like su substantial completion is like beginning of April and then end of April is, is final completion, but um, it's coming up pretty quick. They don't have a whole lot left to do. Um, and then we'll have a meeting on next Wednesday. We'll have a monthly meeting so I can give an update then, but. Perfect. We're in pretty good shape, I believe. Um, I just wanted to make sure people remembered that we have Narcan uh, training on March 26th at 6 p.m. here in the town hall. That is my Board of Health update. That'd is there anything good. else anyone wants to say? Okay, moving on. We're going to go right into our reason for this meeting is the warrant review. Okay. Starting with... The first article. Did you guys want to? So Christopher Dunn is here. Did you want to? Yes. Let's move. Actually, yeah. Let's let the article twenty four so he could speak. Yes, to that. and then we can also because I see that Kathy Sylvester's here too. We can talk about the CPC one. Okay, go ahead, Christopher, and and we'll talk about. Um, article 24. Great. Thanks, Carolyn. I hope you can hear me okay. I'm just stepping onto my boot porch here. Um, so yeah, uh, that article has to do with the vacated Cumberland Farms at the corner of South Main and Sugarloaf. Um, I believe I brought it up at the CCI meeting the other day. Um, there is a couple of private developers who are interested in redeveloping that parcel. They are going to be once again submitting an underutilized properties grant application through one stop. Um, I talked to them recently and they are still moving forward with that. However, um, I do think it warrants consideration um, that we either enter into some kind of agreement with Cumberland Farms or look at some kind of eminent domain, friendly eminent domain um, in the case of that parcel. So I did wanna just include an article on the warrant, um, but you know, we can have we can have a discussion if it makes sense that, you know, if this is the right time or if we want to hold off. Do we know how much the, um, if we do imminent domain, we have to pay fair market value. Do we know what the value is right now? So it's assessed at 330,000. Um, but what is the, 
I think the offer on the table from the um, Hellers is a lot less. You know, Sorry, I, I couldn't quite hear that. Sorry, could you oh, come again, no, Carolyn? No, yeah, the I do not believe that um, James and Jason Heller are offering that um, assessed value. They're offering less. They're offering less. It's not quite fair market value. So it's not fair market value. We yeah. So, so I all I've seen from them is that the the grant application I believe was for two hundred eighty thousand. Yeah. Um, so I, but I do I actually don't know if that is just renovations they were planning at the site, um, and if they were actually going to negotiate a purchase price with Cumberland Farms afterwards. I'm a, I'm a hundred percent supportive of this because I wanted to take this over a long time ago, but um to remove the covenants but uh so we could move forward with some kind of redevelopment or of some sort but um we have to get a a, a appraisal and i don't think we're going to get appraised by the time you know yeah town meeting to tell you well, the truth also i don't know where we get the money do you yeah do you? No, but not I, at this I, point. I also think it's a great idea. I mean, everybody's been clamoring for us to take over I, that I, space and do something, but we just don't have the money. So right, I I, I would actually like us to to put this off to the fall town meeting, and um, so that we can try to figure out where we can come up with the amount of money and we can get a fair market appraisal done. Um, does that sound reasonable to the board and Chris? Well, I have questions of Christopher. Sure. So um, with regard to applying for uh, underutilized buildings, uh, if they don't own the property, can they even apply? And the reason I ask this question is because if they're willing to buy the property with the covenants on it, um, would they be able to do what they want to do or not with you know this application? Right. So, yeah, they are they are able to apply for that program. Um, what I've heard from, you know, people at mass development is it makes it very difficult for them to be competitive. The fact that they don't have site control. Um, you, and then when when you say site control, do you mean ownership or do you mean um, control without covenants? Uh, ownership. OK. Yeah, so the fact that they don't have ownership is definitely a strike against their application. It's also just a really oversubscribed program. Um, right. So they're, they're competing against, <laughs> you know, much bigger projects. Um, and so, you know, it's just a gas station redevelopment. So it's not necessarily the highest priority for the state. Sure. Um, and then to your second point, I believe they were they were looking to work within the, the covenants. Um, I will say I got an update from uh jason the other day and it sounds like cumberland farms has backed off a bit on um you know restrictions on housing and growing grass at the site um so that that is promising um so you know if from what i'm hearing from trevor and carolyn you know maybe what makes sense this year is to be supportive of their grant application um, and if it doesn't work out again, then maybe that's that's when we start having the discussion about this particular article. When's the deadline um, that that uh, or when did that you would expect to hear about the applications for this? You know, if if they would get an award or not. Well, so they've already submitted an expression of interest, so they may be getting feedback from Mass Development shortly. Um, if they move forward with a full application, you know, they wouldn't know until until the fall, like all, like all the other applicants for one stop. Yeah. Okay, so actually we would probably, it, to be next. it would have to be next spring because we wouldn't still have time, whether the, we wouldn't know whether they were successful or not, and we still would need an appraisal. And appraisal is like six to eight weeks out a minimum for a commercial appraisal. Right. I don't I don't know if they've already gotten that from Cumberland Farms. Um I I do know that they've been very they're very willing to to cooperate and help out on this. 
um, because they're, you know, they're just community guys. They just want to see it not be a vacant gas station anymore. Yeah. Um, but that is, but timeline is an important consideration. Very true. Yeah. Well, so, how about we strategize on this further, but mm -hmm. is there agreement that we just drop it for the Springtown meeting? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we still have funding and we, well, we would, I think we'll be in better shape from the fall. Yeah. I know. I believe I, but, I would love to move forward with it. I just don't know how. I yeah. know. No, as far as like dropping this, we can just say drop it. We don't have to like, do we make a motion in a second and go through no. that process or no, just consent to say, yeah, we, we don't want you to stop strategizing on this, Christopher. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. please. Cause I, you know, I'm, a, I wanted to do this two or three years ago. Yeah. And I'm glad you pulled it forward. For so sure. I'm glad you, you actually put the article together, but can, mm -hmm. can we just, I, I, I want to table it at least until the fall, but it sounds like we're not going to be able to do anything constructive until spring next year. Sure. I would, ju I would just mention, so the other kind of option here um, is to look at um, a one-stop application for the town itself um, and to try to fund, you know, appraisal, any other necessary kind of due diligence through one stop. Um, and in that case, you know, I think the article, if it was passed at town meeting would strengthen that application. Um, to Trevor's point, obviously there isn't, you know, a funding mechanism yet for acquisition. Um, but, you know, at least we'd be headed, you know, we'd be headed in the right direction. But if if there's consensus on the board that you want to drop it, that I, I totally understand that perspective and we can, you know, kind of reconvene and just strategize about what what it would look like if we pursued this at, you know, next annual town meeting, for example. Yeah. Well, we'd have to we have to come up with the money for a commercial appraisal and we'd have to get in line to get one. And like I said, my experience with both the Leary lot and the St. James property and everything else, I mean it's six to eight weeks minimum. Yeah, let me ask a, another question. Uh as far as um like an appraised value and let's say this VSH group purchases the land and the buildings for 280,000. If we go out and get that build, building and that lot appraised, it could come back at a higher level, even though they just purchased it for a lower level, right? I think, I, I believe fair market value usually goes by uh, sales data. Um, I'm not sure how the appraisal would would play into it if that was the the scenario that played out. Yeah. Okay. You know, because there might be another way to do this, but I think we should delay. Yeah. Am I only? Oh, go ahead, Casey. You know. I just wanted to reiterate something that Christopher said a few minutes ago, which is, if we got permission to purchase the property and then went through the grant process to obtain the funds for both the appraisal and the actual purchase price, or at least a portion of it. Um, then we don't have to worry about finding the funding source for either one of those right this second. Um, you could certainly make a correction at, at the October town meeting, but to Chris's point, and he and I had this conversation a few days ago, is if you put it on and get approval from the town to make the purchase, um, it strengthens whatever grant request you would do for that money. I feel like that makes sense in this room. And but I know where you're going. I know where you're going. People are going to say the town is looking to buy another vacant lot, and they're going to take tomatoes out and start throwing them. I just—it's <laughs> not that it does. It makes complete sense if you're rational and you understand. Like, yes, this will. No, it's, this is Chris. Chris no, for saying that. It's—it's it's it's totally rational. rational and it makes sense. And I just—but uh, knowing just what we went through this year with a common sense, we got to fix the roads. Um, and just the questions that came out of that. And um, there's just, it would take a lot of education of the public to understand like we're asking for, you know, permission to purchase, but we don't have the money. And it would just, you know. And, the, and the, then we get into getting a grant to appraise it and we appraise it and we find out we can't afford it. Yeah. So we wasted grant money. Yeah. Um, you know, it just seems like I want them to buy the land and then let us talk to them about what we can do to help them redevelop it. Um, I don't really see a, a path where the where the town buys this property. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, uh, well, much as I, 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 I see a, a path where we could put mixed use in there. Oh, no, I'm not saying that there's but, a, you know, housing on top of, uh, you know, but, and we could redo the whole lot, but I, I have to tell you, we don't have a game plan, right? And we don't have right. an appraisal, and we don't have a funding source. So to me, it is premature. Although I'm a hundred percent supportive, and I, I wish it, we had moved right. forward on it two or three years ago, truthfully. Yeah, I mean, That's what, why we hired Christopher? Yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. Thanks, Christopher. I think we take the year and we educate the public, and we say, "Look, this is what we're doing. We're, we want to help, you know, commercial. We want to get can buy it. We want to get the Leary lot in. Yeah, we want to do a little work on the common. We want to keep working on the campus plan, mm -hmm. and then out of the campus plan, we incorporate, you know, Cumberland Farms if the Hellers are not um, successful again, because you know the the boys aren't going to keep right. hanging over. Right keep trying this is the effort on their part yeah. because they love the town right so what my thought would be is again like tim said work with the hellers as much as possible but keep in mind that we're going to do this between now and next spring you know we have a couple of ideas i want to explore with christopher about you know eminent domain and and you know purchasing and so forth and covenants and uh, it's not for a discussion here okay 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 so so as of tonight, we're going to remove it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, but, Christopher. Thank you, Christopher. But uh, yeah, as a as a holding, we're going to hold this for potentially the fall, and but more than likely the spring of next year. No, absolutely. That, that makes perfect sense. And uh, Trevor, I appreciate the local political context. So that's good. Um, yeah, and I think we should talk about how we can be, you know, most supportive of what the Hellers are trying to do. Yeah. Um, if that is the case. And, and or educate the public on like why we think it's a good idea next year and this is the fun right the, well, the governor's the governor's ho housing bond right. will be more defined yep. the whole rural factor that uh, Natalie and Joe and Suzanne Whips is promoting is really huge and so we might have a whole bunch of different options come the fall or next mm -hmm. spring and I I feel it, it's rushed and because it's rushed, it doesn't feel like it. We will be successful. Yeah. Okay. So thank you, Christopher. I I didn't want to, you to be discouraged though, because I'm thrilled to death that you actually have the article ready to go. Oh, not not, not discouraged at all. And uh, yeah, look forward to figuring out what's the best path forward. Um, at least until we hear back from One Stop on uh, the Heller's application. Thank you. Thank you. And is there anything else, Christopher, that you were particularly interested on this or or that we would take up now if you don't want to stay for the whole? No, no, go, uh, please proceed. I'm just listening in. Okay, okay great. Um, um, can I ask a question about, um, I would like to be able to leave by seven o'clock. So okay. what I'm going to ask is, um, can we, we, if we don't, if we don't finish it, if there are seven articles that we haven't finished by seven o'clock, can we take them up at the next meeting? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Good. I just wanted to. Tim, I was hoping to get us out of here in an hour. Okay. Yeah. Hey. First thing okay. we talked about, it's 20 minutes. It's not going to I know. I know. But <laughs> let's do our best. But right. that was a new thing. Um, Kathy. Um, she wants to talk about CPC. Yes. Let's, let's, because Kathy's here, let's um, talk so you don't have to <laughs> stay all night because you. You could stay all night, and then we still wouldn't get to it, maybe. I know. <laughs> I saw the email that you had sent to us on um, the housing authority that Shelburne did. Right. I'm very supportive that we put something in here uh, designating, you know, our housing committee as somebody from that committee being on the CPC. From the senior housing committee, you're saying? Yeah, I mean, there's two ways to think about it. And I think I'm going to speak for Casey maybe on this is we don't have an actual committee on housing. We have an ad hoc committee. So that's one issue. The other issue is I, and may, maybe this is a counterbalance. It seems like Shelburne changed their whole bylaw and they gave a lot of authority to the select board to appoint a bunch of people. Yes. Um, I would like to see and explore a way to just change our ability to appoint somebody to represent housing because we don't have a housing authority and leave the rest of the bylaw alone mm -hmm. um, 
and I, I don't support trying to change the whole bylaw by changing our authority to appoint people in different categories, but that's just me. I, I no, I didn't. I, the only thing that I was supporting changing was the housing. Yeah, to just say the grant the select board or some other agency in town with appointing authority the right to appoint somebody to represent the interests of housing under the CPA, because housing is a major issue for the CPA, and we want to get somebody to represent them. So, right. Yeah, you know, that's all I wanted. It's just very simple. I didn't want to make. A bunch of appointments by the select board and i told you tim it's like you know you guys are great but you know i don't know who's going to be on the select board <laughs> you know i don't think you should be appointing half of the cpa you know um it, i don't see the reason for that it's just we really just have that one seat that we can't fill because we don't you know have anybody from deerfield on the regional housing authority and um so this was Stewart's recommendation as a workaround. And he said that the bylaw was written in such a way so you could do this. They certainly, the intention was for s small towns that don't have a, reach, a housing authority that we somehow be able to find a way to get a representative for housing. And, and that he gave us the language. Um, so, and you know, he felt it was appropriate. And if it doesn't get passed by the, at the state level, it doesn't, but Shelburne's was. And so. Shelburne's actually hasn't been passed. No, it has been. According to Stewart, it was what? passed in November. Yet. Oh. The that's AG not has not approved Shelburne's language so yet. So what was that? So well, that's not what he said, but you know, I don't know. That's, he sent me a thing today that said, and I forwarded it to you. And that's what I mean. I read that before I came here and it looked like the AG's office had a couple of questions that they, well, it wasn't, cons it was basically the authority doesn't start when this thing passes. It, 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 it starts when some other date occurs or some other thing occurs, but it looked to me like the AG was basically in supporting it. I don't know if it was the final word on it, but. Um, well, can we have, do we agree that we want, Lisa, to just format a uh, so I was article. working with Matt Proventure about this, and that was what he warned me about was the AG's decision. So, to be fair, Kathy, I had a doctor's appointment and wasn't able to see your email. Oh, um, sure. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't. You didn't have much time, <laughs> so it just came in today. So, is there consensus on the board that we want to pursue um, a housing position? Uh, and on the CPA, on the yeah, CPA uh, for for our warrant. I have oh, go ahead, Trevor. You have so spoken just about trying this. to understand a little bit. So we have a CPA, and we have a variety of different people on there that decide where the funds go. And right now, um, how, uh, how many people are on there right now? Well, it's a committee of nine. There is no housing authority member, so they, there's never been anyone appointed for the housing Got authority. It. So that's um, there's right. a rec department position, which is statutory. Right. And does we have we happen. haven't been able to get somebody to come from the rec department, but that's a separate issue. Right. Um, right. Yeah, my feeling is that in the legislation. Yeah. And then the right. others are are what uh, one from the select board. Do we appoint somebody? Uh, moderators appointment, select board's appointment, planning board member, conservation commission member. Assessors. Yeah. 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 So they're. Okay. It's, yeah. So there's a variety, and then there's this one thing that's been vacant. It's right? in the it's it's part of the statute, but it's not um, right right made. now. But, there's a ten percent of our CPA money is set aside for housing, but it's clear the governor is going to try to make that a higher percentage, mm -hmm. and so we feel as being on the housing committee with Kathy, I feel very strongly that there should be some kind of housing representative on the CPC mm -hmm. that is based on what we're doing for housing in the town, whether it's the ad hoc committee or whatever, but somebody should be representing housing. Yeah, and I and I don't really have a strong thought about ad hoc committee or not ad hoc committee. I, I really, what I would like us to get consensus on is, I have a consensus that we should pursue the simplest solution to getting mm -hmm. a housing member on this. Not anything else, not Mission Creek, just how do we 
put on a bylaw and send it to the state to see if they approve it mm -hmm. to allow us flexibility to appoint somebody to represent housing interests because we don't have a housing authority. And mm -hmm. I I'm really have consensus with that. And, and Shelburne kind of did that. No. Oh, they there is a different it. way. What did yeah. they do? It? They did the entire bylaw, right. like the entire yeah. structure of the bylaw. And if I'm hearing you, Tim, you're saying you don't want to go that path. No, I want there to is a different way. No. Yeah. no, and that is what we were talking about, which limited. is having this is a limited discussion on housing only, not agricultural commission, not right. all this other stuff. Okay. So basically, it would create you have five statutory appointments and four that are not. What you could do is you could change the appointing authority on those in the bylaw to open it up, and you could actually have somebody. And I might be hearing mishearing you, Tim, but. You could actually have those all be select board appointments, but identify one as to serve the housing interests, even though you have the statutory requirement for regional housing authority, because we don't have a housing authority. Yeah, that, that was what kind of briefly what Matt and I had talked about, because that was his take on it initially. What I when I read when I looked at stuff that was basically I want to be able to peel off there the the five things that are statutorily required, right? Yeah. I want to peel off one of those because we don't have a housing authority and ask the state to allow us to appoint the select board to appoint a member representing the interests of the housing authority right. because we don't have one. Yeah. So that would mean changing some of the the non-statute, maybe changing a non-statutory. Yeah, point. doing the minimum amount we have to to make that possible. Okay. That I, means I'm agreeing that. Don't give us authority that. to appoint any other statutory people. Right. Don't change anything except that one thing. And yeah. Stuart, Stuart gave language to oh, try to use for that. Um, I did forward that at one time to Casey, and I can forward it to you too, Tim, if you'd like. Um, I mean, I'll he, he said he'd be happy to, you know, review the language once we have our own language on that. The issue is it's still got to go through council, Kathy. Sure, yeah. sure, sure. But the AG's office is going to make us do. Yeah, and so what I would suggest is have have Lisa or Matt, whoever is going to do it, mm -hmm. use use that language or try to accomplish the goal that we have consensus on mm -hmm. using entirely different language. Mm -hmm. I'm agnostic about what the language is. Yeah. As, long as, as long as the goal is to change one thing about the housing authority, right? And as, and that's what you are asking us, right, Kathy? Yeah, I mean, and it doesn't have to be from the ad hoc committee. I mean, because housing is a broader thing than what we are doing, Carolyn, on our senior housing. Um, it's, and it's it's obviously a huge push in the state. So I think it makes sense that we have it be more generic than just senior housing. I mean, it could be somebody, you know, from our committee, but doesn't have to be, I would say. Are we feeling right now that, that that committee is underserved by not having somebody on there? They have trouble with quorum sometimes. I see. Quorum. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. No, I, I should you send I should me what Stuart sent you? Yeah. yeah, I'll send it back. I'll send it to you. To Matt. And that's what I remember. I sent an email and said, hey, we should talk. This is a great opportunity. Now that we have Shelburne's decision, if you send me that, I'll set up a meeting and we'll talk to Matt. Okay. okay. That sounds great. Okay. That sounds like a plan. Good. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank, Thank, Thank you. It. We want Appreciate you to know we're so appreciative of the great work you're doing on the CPC. <laughs> Thank you. We yeah, really appreciate that. Thanks. All right. All right. Let's um I don't have a problem with Article One. It's just well, the placement of Article placement, One. Right. Exactly. I don't I don't so if we can just I mean, normally aren't these lower in the like just asking. Normally, aren't these like um, after the I, I, like the blah blah stuff in yeah, the planning? I, I right? think don't we typically have I, I like think report to officers. I forget yeah. what the original so, last year's yeah, but like. right here. But so reports reports to officers right. Acknowledgement of Gris. I moved it all around just to sort of separate twenty four work from twenty five. work. I don't care what you do. You could take all the twenty four work and put it at the end. Well, I don't care. I, I, how, how about logic. how about this? How about we just consider them for their content yes, and say, and we, we, we are planning to change the order of these things. Because I agree. Yeah. Well, all the right. meetings I've been involved in, the reports are in the front and blah, blah, blah. So yeah, there's, but, 
Right, because you need, you need to get the meeting to settle down, and then you get down to the business. Right. Place. Right. So if somebody walks in while you're thanking Eagle for the work they did on the church, you know, that's not really going to affect it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we okay. usually do all that that stuff first. Right. And then that's then, usually, then, and then I like your right, suggestion. Get, get into the Let's just go through. Stuff. We usually so split it up. Right. What I was trying to do is create At some logic those. there. Yeah. And, lo and logic is in the eyes of the beholder. I don't exactly. care where we put them. I yep. just wanted to try to keep all the 24 stuff yeah. together. Logic is like after article uh, six or something like that. Right. Um, well, that's how we normally do it. The yeah. problem is, is so Carolyn and, tr and everybody want to keep the funding for the roads before the rescission of the borrowing authority. But we should also, and I, to your point earlier, I think, we need to make sure that we have our funding for a bunch of other things done too. So yeah. right before we, I hit record, I think somebody, so maybe we put it all, all the FY 24 stuff at the end. Well, all we know well, is that stabilization make the rescission requires one last two thirds vote. So that has to be before we uh, authorize the rescission because right. we need to Correct. make sure we have two thirds vote before we Authorize the rescission. So the money from general stabilization or capital. So you have it in ca you have otherwise. capital, general, and everything all in one article. I just put it all there. All in one article, so we don't have to separate so much from general, so much from. You could, but, but I no, just tried to. If put we don't have to, it's great. If we could just get one vote that allows all of that. I just didn't know if Lisa would need it. Like, if you're pulling from general, it must have its own. If you pull from capital, it must have its own. You know what I mean? I don't know. If Each one of those stabilizations is going to require a two-thirds vote. So by virtue of that, the entire article probably will require right. one. Right. And I, I, if, it, if it can all be grouped into one vote to do all of that stuff, easier. And the only thing I did was I separated the rescission. Right. The rescission has to be later. Right. Correct. Exactly. Right. Okay. So one thing that I would say, there's a little sticky wicket here. Um and I will read to you what I, and I'm not trying to elongate this in any way, shape, or form, Tim. No, no, no. I'm, you they, don't there's, a, there's, a direct, <laughs> there's a direct correlation you guys need to know about. So, you know, the CFI grant that we have for 2.4 million? Yeah. There, there's a question about what matching funds can be, what, so, what the source of matching funds can be. And Chris has not been able to, to, nail it down. We may not be able to use ARPA funds as matching funds because they're federal. I wondered about that. Mm -hmm. So for argument's sake, mm -hmm. we may want to consider, we talked, Brenda and Chris and I talked about this. He's still trying to nail it down. Okay. But if we couldn't use ARPA funds, why wouldn't the board consider using the same amount that we had originally identified in ARPA funds for instance, just for argument's sake, 500,000. Take that, take our match from stabilization and use our ARPA funds for what we would take out of stabilization. That's fine. That's I think fine. it's sellable I, and I think it. I, I think just, you could get people to understand. I thought ARPA disappeared once we called it replacement revenue. It doesn't? It doesn't in this, it may not in this case. Okay. It's trying to nail it down. It's getting it, mixed Messages. change change the bucket of money the other the other thing that um i want to make sure chris has taken into account is the mvp green infrastructure money in that parking lot because that's state match that's state match it's not so much state that seems to be the issue here it seems to be the federal source because yeah. arpa funds are a federal source and that seems to be where he's getting mixed messages Okay. So I just wanted you to know that up front. And, you know, I have a brief update from him. So he had a meeting. Um, there's a couple things you need to know as it relates to the Leary lot. They, we have to do an update um, to the site plan review because there have been some changes that re relate to the MVP. But the, we also have to do an A&R uh, so that the Hamshaw lumber thing can happen the way it needs to happen. So a brief change in the lot lines okay. of our pieces of property. So we've processed that paperwork to be put on the agenda for planning board. And we've also processed a request to go to have planning board review the revisions to the plans, just so you know. Okay. He can and get that, into it in more detail. And that will start. happen on March 3rd, right? Or 4th? 4th. 4th. Okay. So um, 
there's also some other elements here, but I'll wait and maybe have him just shoot you in. Okay. So let's go down to article two. Um, Cause again, we're just, we're just looking at the article's article. content. So this would be a sum of money that needs to be appropriated or transferred. And I'm just anticipating we might have to do this for snow and ice removal. I don't know for do sure. Do we know where we are in the budget at the moment? I don't actually. Okay. Brenda and I hadn't been able to nail that down um, by now, but just a sum of money can be a sum of money for now. Okay. Um, we have time to sort of refine that. Mm -hmm. um, so we also have an unanticipated or to fund unanticipated sewer bills. I'm not sure if it's a bill or two bills, but I can fix that. Um, and I messed up my language, but I'll fix it. But really it's, I guess there was some, in some of the testing that we had to do for the wastewater, okay. we, bills weren't being sent directly to the right address. So there's outstanding old Deerfield testing bills that we have to cover and okay. we would have to do it out of retained earnings. Do you, do you know, um, retained earnings from this wastewater treatment? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Are, are we talking minuscule amount of money or are we talking? I don't. They gotta be. I haven't seen, I haven't seen them. They can't be that much, but we would have to take them out of retained okay. earnings. Gotta be under Their so. prior fiscal year. Yeah. Okay. I, so I just, just had no idea. I'll refine the language. I just wanted you to see that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, All right. And then just, this, that next article, this is the opioid funds article. So as you know, we had $32,204 that came in in 23 for opioid funds. We let that roll into free cash because we were waiting to see if ANF and legislature would figure out a way for us to use this as special funds. Well, they finally did. So what we have to do is we have to appropriate those funds out of free cash so that they can be put into a special fund. And I don't know we're that not spending it yet, but it's we're not spending it. We're just pulling it out of free cash. And so the language that says to establish or to a special fund established pursuant to is to capture the change that happened legislatively. That language could change. But really, it's for the purposes yeah. of using the money for opioid for the allowable opioid uses. Right. Okay. Um, and that's mostly straight language from Lisa from the last time we did this. Yep. That's just a duplication of purposes yep. of purposes of. And she'll refine that. Yeah. So then we do, you know, regardless of where you put those four articles, we still, you know, start them. If you want to start the meeting with the regular stuff, which is reports to officers, elected yes. officials, that's reasonably tight in terms of what I think I changed all the dates for fiscal years. I've identified places where anything that's highlighted or places where I know we need to put tables and stuff. Um, and Brenda was going to try to do that, but she had a lot of work around the budget the, er, earlier this week. So that first article is the same as we've seen it for the past couple of years. Okay. I'm, I'm fine with that. The second one is free cash for the special appropriations, which is reserve fund OPEB out of district placement. This is Article Six. Article right now, it's Article Six. It'll probably end up being Article Two. Yep. Um, and I don't. The reason it's highlighted is I know we're going to have to put numbers in. I just don't know what they're going to be right now. Yep. And just to go back to Article Four for a second, um, what was I thinking about this? Um, regardless of where we consider it. That's going to reduce what we think we have in free cash by thirty two thousand two hundred fourteen dollars. Yes. yes. Right. Okay. It has to. And no, no, that's fine. That's to. that's fine. It. it was a holding. I mean, holding pattern. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's true. So that's the, the, you know, but I'm just saying is, you know, it's the resistance to creating an account for the op opioid money is going to create this problem. We got to do a warrant article, right? And because we didn't want to create a, okay. yeah, we created a stabilization fund. Right. And then they yes. said, we wow. waited to put money in. Right. So I didn't, I don't know that we have to eliminate, eliminate the stabilization fund, but we could consider it. Because they said that it wasn't, uh, that wasn't a good uh, vehicle. No, for they said fund. you didn't have to. They said you could just use a special fund. Oh, and like, almost like a grant fund. You know how we have special funds so that's, separate. So it doesn't need two thirds. It to doesn't vote. need specific oh, okay. appropriation. I got it. Okay. That makes um, sense. Well, we learn. They learn. We yep. move forward. Okay. So we're on Article Six, and we. Yep. Which will be probably Our Article Two. Accepting yep. grants. Blah blah blah. Yep. Um, then, I will seven. ask whether we need to rescind the stabilization account vote. 
Okay. Because we did create the account, but then we didn't want to populate it because we were afraid. I don't know that we do. Right. Yeah, you can just leave an empty an empty account. So yeah, observe, put a note in it saying we don't use this account because it's not the way we should be doing it. Or right. Whatever. Right. Do, are we thinking of uh, another 120 for the reserve fund appropriation? Or are we going to go back to one? We have no idea. We've got to cut over $300,000 out of this budget somehow. Yeah, I know. I just feel like we didn't use anything this year. We have. For reserve? Yeah. All right. We We're going to end up using reserve for elections budgets. Um, we may end up using it for select board expense. I think. But we haven't already. We haven't put the transfers in yet, but we right. will. Okay. And what happens to, when did we appropriate or when did we um, create the assistant treasurer position? That's just recent, not mm -hmm. treasurer, but um, Cassie's assistant. We uh, had that created. It already existed. So, and there was money, we just reorganized there was money it, yeah. associated with it. Yeah. And that money is what in the, in the general fund? It's in an appropriation for town clerk salaries. Right. Okay. And so we would have to perhaps make a, if we haven't got anybody in that position, would we take the money from that position and, and then, and be able to use it on something like this? Potentially we could make a transfer between the stat, that salary okay. item into the expense item. Yeah, I just, I, I don't want yeah. to spend too much time on it. I just wanted to know mm -hmm. if that was legal. Yes, you can, can do that in manager. At the end of the year, which is yep. fiscal yeah. year, it's mm -hmm. July 30. Yeah. So you would do it in right. May or June. So, yeah. It's usually around yeah. May-ish. May-ish. Uh, the DLS comes out and says that you can do the transfer. Mm -hmm. And you have transfers from reserve, but also transfer from appropriation. And so those are at the, once they agree that we can do it, it's at our, at our discretion. It's the discretion of finance and the select board. Now, yeah. reserve fund is strictly finance. Right. Yeah. Between appropriations is both committees. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's good. I just wanted yeah. to understand. If we have to do that, that's certainly something we try to do that between if accounts it's, whenever it's in we can. our own account, we can move it. But yeah. If it's the only the thing we can't do is vote at. Yeah. Because it's considered a school account. Right. And do we know? Uh, do we? Are we? Do we have anything? Oh Jesus! Do? We ended up. We have. We have. As you so you missed the meeting on Monday. We had budgeted for five people because that's what we. Well, that was what was for indicated. Though vote? we only have one. Oh, we only have one student at the moment. Okay. So there's going to the be a lot of money that comes back to the town. All right. And when we talked about this on Monday, we, I think what we second. put forward we, was three was, people, not. This, this was this year we had budgeted for five. Yes, because we had um, indicated that indi we had an indication of at least four students with a potential. And then they, and then usually we give ourselves one placeholder, one. but then there was only, there was only one. one. Wow. So, and we knew that the, it, it, it's up to Smith folk and whether they have yeah. the people or the, the places. The transportation. That's, yeah. that's like half of our um, gap. It's a good chunk of money we'll get back. But what we did initially, Brenda and I talked about it, and we budgeted for three people now. We could cut it back to two. Right. We know there's one pending application and this yeah. student isn't graduating yet. Maybe we can put it towards Franklin Tech. That went up 40%. So. Well, it's nice that we might get some money back. Yeah. Yeah. But so okay. that's, yeah. So moving on. So the next Seven. one is revolving funds. And that's another one that's generally not, um, oh, yeah. That's not a lot of yeah. conversation about. Eight is your class comp. Yep. And we're still, and we have not voted the 2% or anything yet. Correct? So it's in there. All of our budgets are calculated correct. on it. But we haven't voted that yet right no okay but I, th I think that's all we intend so okay so there is this question i there's there's some other things we need to talk about trevor about sort of how we handle the personnel bylaw but that's a little further in mm -hmm. so article nine as it's written right now is uh the omnibus budget okay and i've changed the years on it all right brenda will look at that again yeah um sewer enterprise fund is article 10 and we'll put the tables in. You'll see I place, you know, yep. highlights from myself. It. Um, then we have scams. Yeah. Then we have capital improvements. And oh. capital's first meeting is tomorrow. For scams, I would love to be able to have a discussion with the with the town meeting as we're voting this, right? To say, look, we spend every year excess free cash to cover this thing we are really seriously thinking about 
the prop two and a half to try and get this into the budget because it's we're an not operational going to be able to do this year after year after year. We're, so that conversation came up seven mind. to ten years now or whatever we've had this running. So now we have a good sense of what our budget is. We should roll that into operating budget instead. So of cash. that came up on Monday, we and yes, talk about that for next spring. Yeah, exactly. And, and that I thought this would be a great time to say, hey, there's this, there's other things, but this is a major reason that we should just have a note to say, hey, you know, Dan, can we have a minute to just talk about when we're voting this, that we're voting all of this each year, hoping we have enough free cash to make sure we got an ambulance service and we should make this, you know, do this next year. But I don't know, just a just a, a place to discuss it is all. I don't know. Anyways, moving on. It's a structural change. So it is a structural change. It's a legitimate proposition. To yeah. Have over, I think. Okay. But yes, that's totally a well taken point. Uh -huh. um, so capital is the next one. It's right now it's article 12. Yeah. Um, and then community preservation and their deadline isn't Mar until March. I think it's this Friday, right? March 1st is the deadline for applications. They're only going to receive the one that I submitted for the select board. And um, they had two other potentials, but they fell apart for one reason or another. Yeah. So, I think Julie and Open Space didn't put anything in. Yeah. No, they, they withdrew them. To the point, Is and there's a reason budget? budgets are on this no, agenda. Trails. Oh. I wanted to ask you about that. Mm -hmm. There's a grant. So we're, we're on 13 now. So article 13 is CPC. So Tim had put the application in to use to, he did a capital, a corresponding capital application. So he has a community preservation act application in, and obviously it relates to town property. So it's capital as well. My question to you, Tim, was sort of the ARPA funds you were, cons that were identified in there. Right. Um, and I don't have the ARPA detail. I was hoping to be able to have that today and I just wasn't able to get that. Um, but in terms of how much ARPA is left, depending yeah. on what we need to do for the roads, right? how bad is it? How, what's the your your thought on how I think that there's going to be other sources of income to cover the road repairs. I mean, as but if if there was um once the HVAC system got shifted back out of ARPA, and then there was another thing that was like a thirty five thousand dollar that was actually eighteen twenty one. Yeah. Um, once that got those things got shifted out of there, there is I in by my calculations based on what Brenda gave me um, last fall and what we talked about, there is at, at least seven hundred fifty thousand after the ARPA money that was allocated to Leary lot. Okay. But um, I'm obviously one person, and I I feel like it's the only thing that the select board can directly affect is ARPA. Is ARPA. So there has to be a compelling reason to not look to other sources. Of course, everything's on the table, but um, you don't rob the future to fix a problem that should be fixed some other way. Mm -hmm. So that's my own personal opinion about it. Um, I'd like to be able to... Get something off the ground. I get right. that. Yeah. I was just thinking in terms of roads, now that we know that the Leary lot could be sort of out, up in the air thing. Yeah, and and I agree that maybe we can find a way to reposition ARPA to some other thing and take the money from what that was going to get and use it as a match. I think that's a right. great idea. Well, which right, you know, general versus I, the other. Yeah, the but only thing which with... has to get nailed down for the articles, right? What if we have to use general stabilization for the Leary for the Leary lot? Yeah, and not. I mean, we need to know that pretty quick, right? Because all that's got to be in the language, or is it, or is it just raise and appropriate? I mean, I I think so. What I would do stabilization, you really need to know what you're spending it on, right? Right, you do. And so what I would do is I would just for argument's sake, I when I was talking to Brenda this morning, mm -hmm. um or this afternoon, I what we could do is we could put another placeholder in if we had to use Leary, if we had to fund capital, fund from stabilization for the Leary lot, we could put a separate article in. But if 
at my concern is if we actually have to use some stabilization for the roads too, I wouldn't want to, I would want to be able to give you guys the flexibility to have two articles in there. What do you yeah. think about that? Well, we need, we definitely, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, the plan is to pay well, look, road repair out of general stabilization. Well, but listen, one of the problems with ARPA money is it has to be contracted by December 31st right. this you year. You know, you do not have to you use have it. You have to be allocated. It right. has to That's be right. allocated. Um, you have up to two years. You have till um, December to 31st of 26. So every dollar has to be spent, mm -hmm. but you can contract it. So if we are going to use the ARPA for the road, and use general stabilization for the match on Leary lot. I mean, I don't have any problem with that. I don't, I don't care either way. No, yeah. and, and mm -hmm. I thought we already actually sort of had this Sit discussion back. and we yeah. allocated money to the specific projects. Yes. It was smaller because the HVAC thing was still in there when we had this discussion. So maybe we sure. need to have the discussion again and just yeah. reaffirm it. Well, but I agree with you. If we have to make a swap, yeah, That's it's fine. not a big deal. Absolutely yeah. kosher. And it's right. and it's good because then we're spending our ARPA money so there's no yeah. nobody can claw back. I just back. want to make sure that Warren articles state that so that right. so, so people understand what they're doing and they understand what we're doing. Well, it has to no say questions. the purpose. You have to identify the purpose. Right. So initially I thought maybe we could switch the language once we know about the ARPA. Yeah, got to know that. Change the language in this particular right. article. Right. Yeah. What I can do is I can just put a placeholder that also says if we have to use Leary lot Right, we would use general stabilization, right. which is what I started to type while you guys or were something talking. like that. So yeah. just something there, so that why do we do that just in case if yeah. we yeah. drop one. Okay, okay. All right, but so I did yeah, that. We'll get an answer as soon as we can. On that. He's yeah. working on it. Okay. He's really doing the best he can. There, right. there is I know it's a lot of information. People aren't responding yep. to him. All right, and uh, okay, yeah, and that's um, I'm willing to close this thing as soon as we can close it. But that's also if we could make it three weeks and still give you a week. For Lisa to go over this stuff, yeah. I'm you know that that would be the the March 20 meeting, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, whatever you need. I mean, just, yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm just saying, I, I, I totally us, get it. Him, yeah. We can just, I get it. Meeting. Yeah, it just gives us more flexibility I, I, for, I, for Casey to get what she needs to get done done. And I think right. yeah. she's she's anticipating a lot of potential problems, <laughs> yeah. And I think that's good. I mean, I'm, I'm thanking you for that because we could get into a lot of trouble for just not thinking deeply enough about this, right. And I just want to make sure that everybody understands I'm trying to be cautious. Yeah. Um, and, you know, really working to make sure that Chris and Brenda and I are all on the same page before yeah. we even get this to an yep. update to Lisa and to the finance committee and stuff. Yeah. This is the most important work that we do, you know, mm -hmm. on a yearly basis that yep. has to be right. So thank you. All right. So let's see. Where are we? So the next article, this is we have to do this for. Um, the Stillwater Bridge so that um, the design plans move forward? Right. So here's the thing. Okay. Um, and I had talked to Lisa about this months ago. Um, DOT warned us that we were going to have to start the process. They don't plan to start the bridge until 26. Right. But we have to have a bunch of things in place, one of which is the rights of way yeah. with the takings. So the cost of the takings, the cost of the appraisal for the property right. and getting permission to acquire those pieces, those take, doing those takings. So we have an idea of how much money and we have no idea right now what I was hoping. So I put two articles in here, one's for funding, one's for your acquisition. Um, okay. And funding at first, I was thinking maybe funding could be through a line item, but if we're actually funding to for the purchase of the easements or the purchase of that. Yeah, it's gotta be its own article. It's gotta be a town vote. So that's what you're gonna see it in here. Um, the what first the one is authorization vote? to purchase. Do we know what pieces we have to? We do, we have an idea. Um, and Lisa's done some, Lisa and her staff have done some preliminary review of the plans that DOT produced. Right. And what we'd have to take. They have an idea, but we actually have to do the appraisers appraisal so we know exactly what it is. One of the takings is from DCR, though, isn't it? I don't remember off the top of my head. All right. What we need to do is if this is going to be a discussion, we need the actual map yeah. and the parcels and the 
pieces that we would be taking of the parts. But we don't have that nailed down. We have an idea of what does it this is. need to be in the fall or does it need to be? Well, now? they actually, so DOT wants us to do it sooner rather than later, which is why we started this conversation. I ago. see one article though. It's, no, there's so another there's, one too. Where, there is an, there's. Where's the other one? The one's other one, permission to purchase and one's funding the number? to purchase. Um, well, this is one of those things where yeah, but I know I'm not taking it. I'm not taking it to town meeting until we have the actual parcels, Casey. So here's so a question. It's placeholder, Carol. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, I just want to ask a question. Christopher raised this possibility of you applying to some grant to get appraisals for the the um Thumbies place, right? Is that something that we could also do for this? I don't think so because yeah. DOT is this so DOT um, didn't tell us what the land is. Oh, they did. Okay, they did. so there's pictures out there. So there's there's a representation of what you're looking at. Right. It's not nailed down with costs associated, mm -hmm. Carolyn. But what they did say is we needed to start this process. Now oh, well, we could provide some sort of identification. But I can tell you what will happen at town meeting. People will say we're not going to vote to um, take anything by eminent domain or to take any right away acquisitions if we don't even know what the parcels are and we don't know. Can I suggest a solution to that? Uh, Trevor, you got your hand up. We're getting into semantics. Can we I have just, pictures of what you're looking at. We just I, don't have appraised pieces we, of property. Can we put article 23 with article 14 so they're next to each other? We can't. We can't or can? No, I. we can't. I'm just. Can't, we can't are able to. CCA. Okay, thank you. I'm quite Wait, did you say we are able to put them together? We are here, sir. I'm, I'm, well, I'm trying to catch right. up with what he's asking me. I just want them next to each other so they oh, relate. You know why it's where it is? Because it's all acquisitions and permission to transfer all in one spot. So well, that's then, all then land you can work. Move 14 to 23 if you want. I, that's fine. Somewhere near, they just need to be next to each other. Because if you're asking to, to um, raise money and then. I just think they just need to be near each other so we can do one right after the other one. It just makes sense that they're close yeah, to each so we're, other. We're not talking about them right now. But yeah, they, right, they right. So be I'm just saying, back to back. can I ask a question? Yes. Would it be worth considering asking, and I'm not saying that the person has the time, I'm just making a suggestion to give this assignment to one person to find out, identify all the parcels, their numbers, and everything. I have that. You have right. it. Okay. I have that. Okay, good. What I don't have is the appraised value. Okay, well, <laughs> hell with the appraised value because we're not going to get it between now yeah. and town meeting. So I have I have that information. I got it from DOT. And Lisa's re done a preliminary review on it. We could give people a picture or set of maps for that. We can do that. But what DOT is saying is you have to start this process at least a year and a half in advance. That's why you're seeing it on a warrant. Lisa agrees with them. All so right. I will I, reset I what I have. a long time to do it. I remember when this, I know, but we I had our just, meeting, they talked about it. We got as kind of long have as, to deal with the bumps and bruises and say, look, you want the bridge fixed or you don't? Right. Here it if is. you want the bridge fixed, fixed, we have to do this. If you don't want the bridge fixed, and then you, we don't and have And you want to pay $20 and million? And you want to pay $22 million for the bridge? we've been waiting 22 years. But we should delineate in whatever language. We would have to show some sort of... Parcel A, parcel B, parcel C, parcel Y. You know, do you have enough time to put all that together? Well, no. I, so what I do have is sort of a map that shows some of this. I, I haven't looked at it in a month. I got it. I know. I remember it. But we do have it. The last time we did something similar, we actually just gave them the map. Remember when we did Merrigan Way? Yeah. So we a lot of times if we just put the map into... I think that makes sense. It just may not be an appraised map. We it just may just be represented. See, we're, we're getting the ball started. We don't have dollar numbers yet because we have to appraise all this stuff, but we have to get this stuff going right. to line up with this. And, and, if, and if it needs to get pushed to fall, because we have exactly. an Exactly. If Lisa, if, if you guys and Lisa fall. agree that it needs to get pushed, that's fine. I'm just putting it in there for con. Right. And in the interim, in the interim, um, we know the parcels, we get them appraised. Yeah. And then in the fall, we know what the number is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. In other words, what you're saying, we could we could do the acquisition first and the funding later. Although I think Lisa wanted us to do them tandem, 
Well, just to be clear. So DOT was... Are we going to have a meeting with Lisa to yeah, talk about this? Yeah, you're going to have to. This is just going over the, the basic framework. Right. So I just move that right away thing. Um, okay. So I hear what you're saying. We need to give them a representation. And I knew that too. I just... Okay. It's not there now. Okay, okay. fine. And then uh, 15 is to rescind portion of the borrowing. That's the borrowing authority for the roads. Okay. So is the language appropriate? Um, I'm not quite sure. Oh, I, I don't mean I it's the to... final language. I just meant, yeah. are we as a select board okay with this language? Yes. So let's... And uh, Well, I am once we know that we have enough funding everywhere else. Right. To cover it. So... Meaning yeah. like we're pulling... Well, we're not there yet. The budget isn't done. I understand that. So this is a holder until... I'm not doing it until I know that we have enough from general so, stabilization. We have enough from state funding. We have the old state funding. I think we're there. I think well, we're I think there. we're close. I think what you need to remember is even if you put it on there, you may have to pass it. it there's the possibility of yeah. in any article except certain ones that you'd have to pass it over. Understood. So better to have it there and pass it yep. over than not have it at all. Okay. Just saying. So I was listening to what the board said when they said, put this on. And basically the language I used is something similar to what I've used with Lisa before, which references the article at a special town meeting where this was approved. Mm -hmm. And then when it was approved at the election. So okay. she may switch that around, but I tried to do the best yep. I could. Um, and then this is the quarterly tax. Quarterly taking. tax is the next one. And like I said, you guys can rearrange this. If you want to push this towards the end, I'm fine with that too. I don't care. Okay. Um, this language in article 17, which is the library vote. Yeah. This has had a little bit of tweaking from Lisa fine. already. I'm good. There may it. be more. Yep. Um, personal by personnel bylaw. Article change. 18 is a personnel bylaw change. And you weren't here for a little bit earlier. I had a, couple things that I made comments about. So we need to remove our benefits from there. We need to address authority for certain HR and personnel functions mm -hmm. that the personnel board has now, but we are, I've heard from several people, including our council that we need to make changes to because it doesn't accurately perhaps protect both the town and the employees. Okay. So it's, I have some have of it ready, but we have to have something on this warrant. All right. And CPC. Again, even if we had to pass it over, people need to know we need to do this. We're coming for it. Yep. It's with at the very least, we got to take the benefits out. Yeah. With regard to this, um, and I'm not saying we should do it anytime soon. I'm just bringing it up. Should we have council review all of our bylaws and identify every place where something should be not a bylaw, but um, what's the main, what's the other a regulation? A manual or a regulation. Reg yeah. Because if we could get everything in our bylaws out that shouldn't be in a bylaw so that we have control over it and we can make changes over time without going to the state, that's what we need to do. I mean, I, I personally feel. Mm -hmm. So maybe we've already done that. Figures. We I haven't, know. but we would need to throw some money at that. I know that, oh, yeah. That's a special project. Right. And yes, I think that makes a lot of sense. Right. And the, 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 the early part of it could be. Lisa, hire you know, assign one of your lawyers to identify every place in our bylaws that needs to be pulled out. We don't have to do it. Maybe we, maybe there are ten of them. We just do two of them at a time. Yeah. But you know, come up with a game plan that addresses this. So for the future. So the, the CI. Don't let me forget, Tim. The, no. The CI. PC so CIPC change. bylaw change is a request from Mark Brennan, and it actually came ago. out of a conversation about deadlines. Our deadline idea. is a lot of towns have deadlines for their annual capital. Right. But we keep running into issues where we have to make changes. And so he asked me to ask you if you'd consider making a change to that. Does he? Well, what's the change? Does he want it more time or does he want less time? A little more flexibility. This is the thing. That's the thing. We the, 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 Remember when I came on with Bruce St. Peter's and all the guys did this huge change on the thing because they were they didn't like capital coming in too late for them to think about it but we're we're always like last minute you got to do something and you never really know what your budget is until like march 30th so we're figuring um so the more flexibility the better i'm happy to listen i'm not sure what that would look like. like i need to talk to, to the <laughs> committee a little bit more about well, it yeah. since we haven't number one we don't have money for capital anyway this year i would just say put this off till the fall 
because there, the capital committee is the first meeting is Thursday. Tomorrow. Yes, but then that forces us in December to run up against the same thing. Yeah. If you create language in the bylaw that gives you some well, flexibility. Come back and tell us what language, just so we know. Okay. I don't know what you want. I mean, if yeah. you want to take it out, it's fine. It no. just, I'm the reason is, is we no... keep running into this problem. I, I, know. I agree. But... I just don't want us to be situational and then cut off our noses despite our faith. I agree. Yep. Yeah. I, I, I don't really have a problem with it. It's just that yeah. it's too rushed. Well, I, I, I even if it was rushed, I don't have a problem. I just need to know what he's suggesting. No, so the suggestion would be change either the deadline for annual capital sometime perhaps later than December 1st or it has to be create a little bit more flexibility to allow people to come in after January 1st up to maybe a certain period. You don't even get started until January and February. Right. No. And I didn't and even know a lot that. of people have their capital come in. Right. I didn't even know that the, the 1888 building project was a CIPC project um, until after the deadline was gone. Right. So, um, and then that's my fault. It's not anyone's. No, I know. But but we did have to make a change in the asset management one. I had to produce yeah. an application, two applications. Right. right. Um, flexibility is good. Flexibility is good. <laughs> that's all I'm saying is what does that look like? bylaw change we just talked to Kathy about, do, do you need a, uh, do we need an article or is it something you're going to ask the state? Well, what I want to do, I have a placeholder in case we okay. need to do an um, article. And then now that we have some guidance from the AG's office, what I'd like to do is meet with her and Matt and go over what that guidance was and what he thinks we could do. Okay. And keeping in mind that what Tim said was, can right. we make a small change? If you can make a sentence change right. and accomplish the goal, that's the preferred mechanism. Yeah, I agree. It's easier for the residents to understand, and it's yeah. easier for the AG to look at one sentence and say yay or nay. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the, it um, doesn't need to be a comprehensive change. I don't want a comprehensive. Right. It needs to be simple. So basically that goal is a how of having housing representation, right? Exactly. So, yeah. Because we don't have a housing authority. Yeah, I know. Seal of land. And giving the select board the authority or some other person <laughs> the authority to appoint a person to represent a Deerfield resident to represent the entrance of community housing. Okay. All right. The uh, Alice property. So people. this is the piece of property where the red barn is. Yep, great. And the second one is that is to what? convey the property that we are about it's, to purchase from Quavis so that they can do the the redevelopment. Lori Quavis. Oh, right? okay, gotcha. Eighty five gotcha, North Main Street. Okay. Yep. All right. Um and then the twenty three is Oh, this is the one that's we gonna just move. have to we're gonna move this. Yeah, you're gonna move it. So this article wait, can long. we just go back to um article twenty two? Yeah. We're we're gonna have to have real explanation on this is because we don't want to operate the housing authority. So this Correct. is for a developer to develop that right. property and then um for the housing authority. And we don't have anybody nailed down yet. We're just no, having no. the right. And I think Lee we could speak to that very yeah. effectively. Okay. Yeah. Now the question about this too is We've already gotten approval from town to buy this land. Yeah. Correct. So, right. And we'll have purchased it. By so, the this is to ask, okay, us to, to be able to convey it, to be able to take land that we purchased and use it for the purpose for which we purposed, purchased yes. it, which is redevelopment. Right. 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 Yeah. We didn't ask for the ability to then dispose of it in that right. first request. Right. We didn't, well, okay. we, we didn't do it clearly. Yeah. It says right. to the authority of the select board, but it's not clear enough. Okay. So when we meet with when we meet with Lisa, I'm going to ask her to explain this to right. me. Sounds well, you good. have to get permission to acquire and get permission to dispose. Right. No, I meant the the technical language that right. we and we could conceivably interpret it that we already gave the select board authority to do this, but there is some doubt about it, and I want to understand what's okay. the core, what's the what's okay. the basis of this doubt. That's fine. So that's just a semantic well it's probably a legal thing but she could probably articulate why we didn't do what we should have done so what is 24 what piece of land is that oh this is cumberland's which we're going to pass right so yeah. yeah that's already i've already yeah. eliminate i put a note on there to eliminate that climate decarbonization um, resolution know, we should leave it's a resolution but i haven't seen anything so if you guys want to take it out, it. Kick it out. No. Other. no 
No. Climate thing at this point. So, All right, let's just, I'll just take it out then. Thank you. Tell them we, we, we need to have um, a period where we can have a public hearing about this and maybe we can do it in the fall just to give them a reason why we're not doing it now. Okay. Yeah. I wouldn't see it as a bylaw change. A resolution is simply something that could get produced, but it has no teeth. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, it's. I just left I, it there because it came up at a meeting. I got an email from and I somebody just took it out. today saying that we, we should make a declaration about the Middle East. And yeah. We have no control that's of the why Middle East. Yeah. yeah. All right. That's why you want to close Warren, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So I will tell you, you could close the warrant and reopen it, but once you, it has to be closed. The language doesn't have to be final, but it has to be closed by the 28th of March. Right. To comply with the bylaw. Yep. Okay. That's why placeholders are important because we can narrow the language down better later. Can we, can we just, um, I'm, I'm, I want to put it on the war. Uh, we'll talk about the placement of the articles on wednesday so what i'll do is i'll rearrange this again okay and move all the fy 25 uh, i'll move the war the articles back to sort of the way we use we normally do it yes but my concern is if we do this because what it does is it carves a piece of the 25 business out all right my concern is where do you want the rescission article in relation to a funding article because normally I would put all the 24 funding stuff in one packet, like in one section. Um, I think the funding, the Because like rescission... you said, we need the capital funding to be done if we're going to use stabilization yeah, or think, we do a rescission. I think all the rescission should be, the rescission should be at the, at mostly at the end. Once we know that we've been able to um, fund, fund everything. Fund the road. Last fund article. Stuff. Yeah. Last, you want it the last article? Or, okay. or it doesn't even have to be the last, but it, you know, it could be before the land stuff here. Um, well, what about. Actually, that's where I had it. Yeah. I, I thought you mentioned, Trevor, and I agreed with it when you said it, is that we should deal with the rescission directly after we deal with yeah. paying off, yeah, transferring. Exactly. And we, we need to have a plan in our own hands that says, okay, we're going to take. Three hundred fifty thousand yeah. from this place, and we're going to take one hundred fifty thousand from that place, right. and know that money exists. And if any money comes in, and drives up in the interim, right, that that becomes part of the discussion. Um, I agree. We need to have a meeting on that. With, yeah, maybe with Brenda. And kind of so maybe That's we amazing. should consider. But those articles should be everything, and then having that conversation. You know, having that. In terms of like the, where the articles are placed, those things should be considered together. Yeah, you know, the, the, we're giving us authority to take money from stabilization from other sources. Yes, and maybe the final language actually identifies where we're going to take the money from. Yeah, I mean, if right. you know, Joe Smith came in and donated four hundred thousand dollars, we could put in, Thank and we're going to take Smith. the four hundred thousand from Joe Smith. You know, so you could just put provide a sum of money. Right. You don't have to identify sources, yeah. but usually we do. It's just mainly it's the the well, well at least we should be able to say, they, if we say a sum of money and we yeah. we ourselves have this document that says. We've identified this plan to do this. Right. You could get into more detail. I just put stabilization accounts Fine. in there just for argument's yeah. sake. Yeah. 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 Whatever, you know, That's why I always say or otherwise we're by. Right. Yep. So I will rearrange this a bit and keep like you want yeah, like articles with like articles. So I, I can do so. that. And and the heavier lift ones at the end. Yeah. Okay. So do you want the land articles at the end? Or the zoning or the changes, the bylaw changes at the end. So here's here's a, a thought. Let's maybe look at this. Like, I don't see any real reason why anybody's going to argue with a simple CPC bylaw change. No. That could be handled early. Get everything that can be handled in a five-minute discussion yep. up early. at the front, regardless of whether it's 2024, 2025, and get those things passed. We get a rhythm set up in the meeting. People are approaching things with, a, you know, okay. Yeah, let's do this. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe CPC is no. going to generate huge arguments. No, I was just thinking, usually you do your funding articles first. That's the only reason I have it set the way it's set. Yep, yep. I, I generally put bylaws at the end because funding is, is it's the more yeah. critical piece. And I think Dan will say something to that effect. He said that to me before. Yeah. So that's usually why you see any sort of bylaw change at the end. 
Yeah, no, I get I'm it. not trying to contradict you. I'm just saying. No, that's no, I, I, I believe there's a logic to what you did. I'm not suggesting it's illogical. I'm just suggesting I, from I, a from I, a standpoint I, of. Let's get it done and get positive stuff that's not controversial. We just go through. Yeah, because everybody's going to be there. Your bylaw changes together. If they're not, I mean, yeah, I guess if they're not major, maybe what we could do is let's put, let's have a piece of paper that gives us, you know, we can snip and cut, put all the bylaw changes together and on one page, put all the funding things on another page, put all the stuff that's not either of those on another page and figure out how logically do we put this meeting together? I, I mean, I don't know. Uh, you this is where having Lisa and Dan in that in in the conversation that conversation yeah. would be useful. Yeah. Um, so if you guys wanted to hold this open until the 20th, did you want me to try to schedule Dan to come to a meeting? Whenever he needs to, wants to. Yeah, I just want to make sure that he I don't feels, know that we can get him by next week. He but... feels comfortable. Yeah, we may not be ready. Might need a, you know, yeah, a and if we need meeting. to do uh, as uh you know, an off, off week, off week thing. This was successful because we did an yeah. off week. Yeah. yeah, it was really nice. And yeah. and like and be flexible. You know, with, we can do it by Zoom. Yeah, it's yeah. really a. And structure. I would invite Lisa to that too. Yeah, yeah, because she's going to have some comments too. I, I feel very strongly that we we could just have a separate meeting on this. Yeah, maybe so, on the and on the thirteenth or something. I'm not. Do I'm it not that in way. favor. Or, I'm not in favor of leaving it open till the twentieth. So if you can get Dan together before then. Let me see if they could meet on. Yeah, find out when they're available. I mean, I'm happy to close it the 13th. I'm happy to close it the 12th. We we can as always vote have... to open it. At, and as long as we have it fully closed by the 28th. I know, I know. But I, I feel it's important to close it fairly soon. So yeah. why don't I try to have them meet with us? By the what day is the that one? If we want to, is there following any... Wednesday from next week's meeting? The thirteenth. Is there... yeah. Is there any reason why do we have to give advance warning other than hosting a meeting to op reopen the warrant? Do we have to have? Is there anything that has to happen? No, you just have to take a vote. So it so would have to be on a warrant just... or on an agenda. A posted meeting. Right. Yeah. We just you open and close it and close it. Yeah. Same so way. so okay. So we've got meeting scheduled on the sixth, but we don't think we may not be able to meet with Dan and Lisa before then. Um, if we scheduled a, an off week meeting and you know in con consultation, Dan and Lisa available on the thirteenth, maybe we can close the warrant on the sixth, reopen it on the thirteenth, have a discussion, and then make whatever it. changes, and then close it again. That's fine. With me. Yeah, I mean, so if we've if we've properly noticed people that we're going to be talking about the warrant, right? Um, and you, for instance, you close on the sixth. If we say uh, annual town meeting warrant discussion, uh, warrant open and closure, that's plenty of notice for people. I mean, we don't even have to say that. I don't think because no, you're talking you just about, talk the about the warrant, and then we decide that we need to open it make some changes, and then we close it again. All right, Fran's I know in. we don't have to, um, I, I know we don't have to make a big deal out of no, it. No, you don't. Yeah. We but just warrant, we notice people that we're talking about it. More comfortable if we close the warrant now, I mean, well, next, you know, next. next week, um, because when you leave it open, yeah. it's, it's too subject. I mean, people can come in with stuff. Yeah. Well, what and time we, do you we'll, want to meet with them on? Hold on, I'm looking at the calendar. I'm um, I, the only thing that I'm concerned about is we just I want to make sure we have plenty of time for Lisa to review it and Dan to feel comfortable with it. And right. if we leave it wide open, you have potential for changes. That's all. So, do you want to do five o'clock or six o'clock? Uh, which o'clock? date? The thirteenth. Oh. I don't care. One oh two, Christ! Five, I got a CPC meeting. Oh. <laughs> Cremony. My mom used to say that. Cremony. Uh, 30 or something. What time's your CPC meeting? Oh, 6 15. Oh, okay. Well, do you want to try for five? Yeah, we just do it yeah. five ten. Oh, that would be great. Why don't we do five? And then if we have to make an adjustment or pick a different day, if they can't make it, you know. Because the other thing is, is even if you close it, you can still move things around. Yeah. You're, you decide what this final warrant looks like. I know. Even yeah. after the 28th, you can move things around. Right. Tim, we're in control. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's good. I know. So, I just don't want to. Yeah. No, I understand your concern. 
and um, trying to be recognized, you know, if you're okay with one more week. Yeah. Because you could close it right now if you wanted to, and you can reopen it next week. All right. To you. Then I make a motion that we close it right now. Yeah. I'll second it no one. for discussion and then. I mean, fine. as long as we have flexibility to, yeah, to, we do. We do. If we need to reopen, yeah. All right. All those in favor? Tim Helchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Make second. Thank you. All those in favor? Tim Helchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you.